So let's now dig in more specifically to just one of the pardons and clemency grants that Donald Trump did yesterday. So I've already kind of given you the big picture. Eleven people received different forms of clemency from Donald Trump yesterday. The the theme is it's elites pardoning elites. It's Trump setting up a framework of pardoning both Republicans and Democrats in advance of pardoning his cronies. It is the normalization of corruption, political corruption. Eh, is that even really a crime? Trump insisting on Twitter. Nobody even really knows what Roger Stone did, which is, of course, not true. But it's part of this idea that political corruption and cronyism and all the stuff Trump said he would eliminate as president. It actually is stuff he's not only not eliminating, he thinks should simply be legal. Now, when it comes to the specific idea of pardoning former Illinois governor Rod Blagojevich, Donald Trump admits he doesn't really know Blagojevich, but he did see Rod Blagojevich's wife on TV. And that is what gave him information about the Blagojevich case. Take, take a look at what Donald Trump said yesterday about that. We have commuted the sentence of Rod Blagojevich. He served eight years in jail. It's a long time. And uh, I watched his wife on television. Uh, I don't know him very well. I met him a couple of times. He was on for a short while of The Apprentice years ago. Uh, seemed like a very nice person. Don't know him. But he uh, served eight years in jail. There's a long time to go. Many people disagree with the sentence. He's a Democrat. He's not a Republican. So notice that he says, I don't know Blagojevich, but I saw his wife on television. So I started looking around. What is it that Rod Blagojevich's wife has said and done on television that might interest Donald Trump? Well, it turns out that Patty Blagojevich has been on Fox News a few times and she specifically linked Rod Blagojevich's situation to Donald Trump's saying James Comey and Robert Mueller have perverted the law against Donald Trump, just like they perverted the law against my husband, Rod Blagojevich. The following month in another Fox News appearance, Patty Blagojevich said the same people who went after her husband are going after Donald Trump now defending Donald Trump against investigations, saying this very popular Republican talking point, they meaning investigators, Democrats, who knows, are trying to undo elections and play politics instead of doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, supportive of Donald Trump during these appearances. Check out this clip. Have you heard any more about the potential for a pardon from the president? Um, I haven't heard anything at all. I, you know, we are so grateful for the president to even be thinking about us in that respect. He's given our family um, a tremendous amount of hope. And, you know, we're confident that the president's going to do what he thinks is right regarding that. Um, so, I mean, we are, um, you know, we say our prayers every night and hopefully look forward to the day that my husband gets home. But, you know, this whole thing that this happening this weekend is just so familiar to me. Um, you know, I can't believe these people are at it again. Um, you know, they use whether it's using false information to obtain, you know, warrants or turning you know, trusted advisors into spies against you. Against you, it's um, I'm, it's like almost like I'm reliving it all over again. When you talk about this um, weekend, you're talking about Paul Manafort. Um, I'm talking. No, no, I'm talking about like this. The latest re revelations about how uh, the FISA court and how okay. that they used uh, slander was essentially opposition research slander against the president to, you know, to spy on him. So it makes no sense. Patty Blagojevich is there trying to uh, use some of the debunked Trump talking points about the Russia probe, using them inarticulately. But the idea is clear defend Trump while saying we have suffered at the same hands and this worked very, very well. Trump acknowledges he saw Patty Blagojevich on TV and now he's pardoning Rod Blagojevich. If you want pardons or commuted sentences, you know what to do. Badmouth Comey and Mueller while defending Donald Trump and Trump will do anything you want. And in the meantime, we've also learned that the construction company owner that Donald Trump pardoned, a guy named Paul Pogue, his son and daughter in law, donated two hundred thousand dollars to Donald Trump's campaign since August of last year. Once again, it's more of the same. Trump said he would get corruption out. Trump has actually done more to normalize corruption than any recent president. And uh, to uh, uh, th think about it another way, if you want to zoom out and look at what's going on here, this is another one of the ways in which Mitch McConnell and other Republican senators 
are uh, enabling all of this. They ignored and actually blocked relevant testimony and evidence from the impeachment trial, which they knew they were going to be voting for an acquittal for uh, Trump at the end of from the beginning. They are now looking the other way as Donald Trump is laying the groundwork to normalize corruption, to start pardoning his associates. And this is very similar to something. There's elements of this that are similar about how Saddam Hussein came to power in Iraq. You know, we often wonder here in the United States, how does a country just lose control and go from being a relatively secular and advanced country, developed country like Iraq into being taken over by someone like Saddam Hussein? How does it happen? It could never happen here. Well, it's been described actually how Saddam came to power in Iraq and it was an Iraq that was previously quite modern, quite moderate in many ways. And you create what is sometimes called a republic of fear. This is actually described in a book by Kanan Makia. Kanan Makia later lobbied for the U.S. to invade Iraq and uh, it has not been right on anything, but very interestingly describing sort of the atmosphere in Iraq. Uh, in the lead up to Saddam Hussein taking over. And the idea is this republic of fear. You pardon some people and then you essentially own them. You get away with um, uh, manipulating the justice system and courts and you create a situation where people who you appear to be on the same side as fear you because they worry you might turn on them. People who are on opposite sides fear you because they see that you are running rampant and flouting all of the norms and checks and balances and, and all of the infrastructure that is supposed to prevent exactly this type of despotic behavior. And then all of a sudden you get a situation where you might take someone that you previously were praising and you very publicly point to them as an example of what's wrong. You put them in front of the public and say this person did all of these bad things. And then everybody who you've been protecting all of a sudden starts to panic. Trump was protecting me before, but is this the end? I'd better start turning on the people around me. I'd better pledge my loyalty to Trump uh, louder than anybody else. And I'll do whatever he wants because I've got to stay on Donald Trump's good side. This sort of dynamic, uh, very similar to what was going on in the increasingly corrupt Iraq that was ultimately under the power of Saddam Hussein doesn't mean everything is the same about the U.S. in 2020 and Iraq decades ago, but an interesting crossover there. And this is all Trump normalizing the exact type of corruption that he said so many times he was going to be the guy to get rid of. Let me know what you think about the pardons. We will take a quick break and be back after this with much, much more. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Vincero Watches. They're giving my audience 15% off your entire order when you go to davidpackman.com slash watch. Maybe you don't usually wear a watch and you've been thinking about looking for one to elevate your look or you've been thinking about replacing the one you have. Check out Vincero. It's an American company. All of their watches are built in small batches from high end materials. They look amazing. And they look like something you'd spend a lot of money on, but every Vincero watch ranges from $150 to $300. I went on their website and picked out the Kairos in white and silver. Really love the look, the combination of the white face and the uh, beige band. Really love this one. They also sent me the Kairos limited release gold reserve set. Totally different style. This one would make a fantastic gift for a couple people uh, I can think of in my family. Anytime you see me wearing a watch on the show, I'm wearing a Vincero watch. Go through their collection. I know you'll find something you like and you'll get 15% off when you go to davidpackman.com slash watch.